Welcome back to our tech. In today's review, we unbox these gorgeous pair of powered bookshelves from Edifier. I've been using a pair of Creative 2.1 speakers, in fact, the SBS 370 for a very long time. I think it's about 15 years now. Uh, it's very long time since I wanted to upgrade these. Uh, these Edifiers, I think they're a really good pair. Uh, th these are the new model called the R1855DB uh, with a wide variety of inputs and 70 watts of RMS. Let's see how good these speakers really are and we'll also do a comparison towards the end of the video to see how good they are as compared to the older creative speakers. So let's dive right in. And before we proceed, please make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you so much. So I ordered this on Amazon and I think it took about a week to deliver. Uh, let's get rid of this outer box. Inside you have the original package packaging and it's all wrapped in plastic. Uh, this is pretty heavy. This whole box should easily weigh about uh, 7 or 8 kgs. I'm not sure. But I just love the way this thing is packed. It looks really neat, looks premium and it's really heavy. So this is not a paid review. I bought this on Amazon for uh, 1300 INR, which is about $185 in case you are in the US or any other country for calculation. And we will find out if these uh, bookshelf speakers are really worth the money. So after a bit of fumble, this is the front side of the box. Uh, uh, this is the 1855 series. Uh, it's the upgrade to the predecessor, which is the R1850. DB, which I could say has a lot of fans on the net because I was planning to buy that one and this one came out um, and owing to its quality, appearance and performance, the 1850 was really uh, common among people buying edifiers. So just like the 1850, this has got 70 watts RMS, two line inputs, optical input, coaxial input, there's a subwoofer output. So what exactly is different? Well, this has got Bluetooth 5.0 and a new remote. Dimension wise, uh, the speakers are six inches wide, 10 inches tall and about eight inches in length. So seems to be in different languages. Let's flip the box. Okay, finally some details in English. For the highs, uh, these speakers have 19mm silk dome meters. Uh, they're a pair of mid-range woofers, uh, Nomex base woofers. Uh, so the woofers are about 19 watts into 2 and the tweeters are about 16 watts into 2 RMS. So altogether it comes to about 70 watts RMS. Um, just look at this box, it's put together so well. Let's quickly go ahead and open this up. Inside again, it's very well packed, so you should have zero problems with damage or any kind of uh, doubts that might be running in your mind. Uh, the whole thing is wrapped nicely in thermocol and plastic. You also see a lot of cables thrown in. So opening this big bag of cables, there's also a little remote. This is the more compact version as compared to the older 1850 remote. Again, it's double wrapped in plastic. And the remote looks good. It's like one of those Alexa remotes and I think it runs on a compact uh, lithium cell. We'll come to that a little later. Here's another cable. This one's the 3.5 mm uh, to RC out jack. Uh, and here's an optical cable. This is really nice. I mean, this is about 1.5 meters, I think I read on the box. But it's a really nice gesture to see that uh, they've thrown in an optical cable, even though they've given you uh, several other cables here. This looks good.
We also have uh, these extra RCA cables for the line inputs, basically a pair of uh, two RCA cables. Then there's this big cable. So this looks like a coaxial cable when you first see it, but it's actually the proprietary inter-speaker cable which uh, uh, you know this uh, speakers come with. So this is about 10 feet long and it's got its own proprietary jack for both of the speakers. So in case you're looking to extend it, uh, it's going to be difficult to get these, I'm sure. Uh, and they're very thick as well, so I think it's very good quality. But replacing them could be a challenge. So let's uh, pull out the speakers and, you know, uh, you would see that at every stage there's so much of plastic wrapping and protection giving, uh, given to the, these speakers, so that's really nice. Um, there's also a layer of foam coating inside. I mean, there's there's a foam uh, packaging as well inside the plastic. So they've done all they can to protect these speakers from scratches and it's really premium packaging. Uh, they just want to make sure that you have this experience of having the speakers in pristine condition. Though these look really small, I mean, these are really heavy. They're built really solid. There are some glue marks from uh, the foam on the inside, but you can get rid of that. Uh, giving you a side view of the tapering design. So the base itself is supposed to have uh, some sort of an angle. Uh, so, you know, it kind of looks tilted towards you in case you keep it on a table. I think there's a 10 degree angle towards uh, the surface so that you know uh, the speakers hit you rather than facing uh, the wall behind you so that's really neat taking off this grill you can see the woofers and the tweeter and this is very common with bookshelves most of them have these removable grills which is really nice uh, the woofer is ported so it's actually a mid-range speaker but does a job of woofer as well and this whole thing is made of solid MDF and you can feel the quality, it's really nice. At the back of the left speaker, you can see the connecting port. And this is where the proprietary cable goes in. There's a white outline that helps you uh, place the cable before you, you know, insert it into this jack. So just make sure that you have a look at it. So these are very well-built speakers. Uh, there's some edifier branding on the grill. Very subtle, but nice. A look at the rear of the main speaker. So this is where uh, I could tell you that this unit is heavier compared to the other speaker. So they're both differently weighed, uh, probably because of the amplifier inside. Uh, at the rear of this speaker, you have uh, the various control options, the bass, treble, and the multifunction uh, jog dial, which lets you select between different inputs. And I think it's a very nice way to uh, shift between different inputs as well. There's a power on and off switch as well at the back. Uh, the power cord is uh, permanently fixed, so you can't disconnect that. So this is the grill, it's pretty translucent. It's not a very strong grill, so I suggest, you know, be careful with it. I think some people use it without the grill as well, and that's quite common Common with uh, this these set of speakers. Uh, so there is a lot of inputs. The speaker gives you optical, coaxial, very comprehensive. There's a subwoofer output. I mean, it's very rare to get a subwoofer output from a pair of bookshelves, but this has got it, so that's very really nice. If you want to connect this to a subwoofer, I think it's going to blow away uh, uh, the kind of sound these things are going to output along with the subwoofer, so definitely try that out. So this is really good. Now the remote is uh, very compact, very simple to use, straightforward. It's like one of those Alexa remotes, uh, I'm sorry, the Fire Stick remotes that you get it's very clear i mean what you see is what you get 
uh, there's a button for every function there's a volume control as well and this runs on a compact battery uh, it's protected by this tiny plastic sheet so once you pull that off it's ready to go so you can use it so just make sure you pull it out before using the remote the manual inside is pretty okay uh, it's uh, not colored it's just nicely printed though it's got uh, not much of detail in it because I wanted to read more about the subwoofer uh, output which this gives but there's no detail on it. it just says there's a base output but nothing else so in case you want a manual there is one but I don't know what more you can read on it so let's take a closer look at these knobs like I mentioned uh, the bass and the treble have a limit so they go up to a uh, level of 6 for the bass plus and minus and uh, the jog dial is kind of uh, a knob which can keep turning which means it will keep shifting between different inputs the subwoofer output uh, will work with a 3.5 mm jack so uh, that can be again plugged into your subwoofer So there is an indicator on the speaker itself. So let me power it on and you can see that the red light just comes up which means the power is actually uh, on and the device is ready to use. Now there are different modes you can see. For example if you put the power button on and uh, you could see the color based on whatever input has been selected. So when you select line 1 on the remote for example you should see a single blink which means it's chosen uh, line 1 RCA if you choose line 2 you should see the same green color light with two blinks if you uh, select say the optical uh, input then it should have a red light blink once if you choose coaxial it blinks twice in the same red color if you choose bluetooth it will blink blue and remember bluetooth blinks continuously till you pair it with the device and uh, there is a mute button which means uh, whatever mode you've selected on there is a slow blink if you press the mute button So we're all set, let's go quickly and do a quick music demo. And see how this sounds, wow these woofers are really moving. Now one thing you need to know about these particular uh, set of edifiers is that there's a difference between this and the cheaper versions you get out there. So it's all in the crossovers, right? So uh, these don't use a parallel connection between the tweeters and the woofers. In the cheaper variants of the edifiers, you have a parallel connection, which means if you buy the 1280, for example, you have a parallel connection between your tweeters and your woofers. They just use a capacitor to separate that. In these speakers, there's an actual DSP or a signal processor which sends out separate signals to the tweeters as well as the woofers. It's sort of a bi-amplifier crossover setup which means it gives you extra clarity and that's why you're paying a little more for these speakers than let's say your $100 edifiers. Speaker connection, like I mentioned there's a white icon drawn around the jack so that you know uh, how exactly to line it up and then you know it should help you fix this easily uh, I suggest using the optical uh, input for maximum clarity I think coaxial is on par as well uh, so if you have a computer which uh, doesn't have any of these you can use the line-in cable and the headphone jack that works well as well um, if you have a television or a set-top box or any other optical out device you can use the optical cable make maximum use of uh, the clarity bluetooth works great as well very easy to pair okay now that the speakers are set up let's quickly watch a movie trailer so this is uh, from the new marvel series called shang chi i just picked it up randomly I 
gave you 10 years to live your life. And where did that get you? And now for some music. I'm recording this with a professional mic right in front of the speaker just to show you how good the sound output is. see how it handles something else, something more bright. Like I mentioned, I want to replace my Creative 2.1 SPS 370 with these speakers. So the, the Creatives are really small speakers. I mean, they are about more than 15 years old. I know it's not going to be a fair comparison, but I just wanted to see how they sound as compared to these edifiers. So the Creative speakers uh, have a total uh, RMS output of about 21 watts. So it's a 11 watt subwoofer with two satellites of 5 watts each, so 21. Edifiers are about 70 watts uh, RMS, so massive difference. But there's a subwoofer with the creative, so that can kind of compensate for those small tweeters. And let's see if there's a difference. I mean, this is why, you know, we need to do a comparison, right? I mean, uh, just wanted to see if it really made a difference replacing uh, these small speakers. Now, uh, I'm not going to say that, you know, the creative is going to sound better. Uh, let's do some quick sound tests and uh, play music on both these. I'll, I'll let you know what is playing where so that you can judge yourself. I'm using a professional mic to record this from the speakers themselves. Here we go.
what I'm gonna do now is switch between the creative as well as I'm going to switch to the SBS creative speakers just to see what happens. We're gonna switch back. I'm really clear on this. Again. For some reason, there's more bass on the creative. Windows just got one subwoofer, which is with the same speaker. Through the waves cut through me 
There you go. I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, was there a significant difference? I think there was, right? So the edifiers have a beautiful sound because of the full range speakers they are. Whereas the creator was a little more louder, a little more brighter. Obviously older technology, but they're still good speakers. So the edifiers are really good buy if you're looking for a pair of quality bookshelves. They're built really well. They look good on your table and uh, they sound really nice as well if you had a subwoofer i think you get a full range uh, sound experience which uh, could be mind-blowing so i definitely recommend these speakers in case you're looking for uh, bookshelves as always uh, thank you so much for watching our tech if you like the video please do hit the like button and subscribe i'll leave links in the description below and i shall see you on the next one bye